Hello, I'm uh, Raveler1, and this is uh, the Tapestry of Gaming. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Ooh, man, this lighting is a little bit brighter than usual. Let me see if I can fix that before we get into things too far here. Uh, I'm so glad you're here. It is uh, the 16th of March in 2020, and uh, that is very close to the Ides of March, the middle of March, the 15th and 16th, as the Romans did it. So I thought I would do um, something a little different with the stream today. I thought I would go ahead and play some Hegemony Gold. Uh, it's a little bit of an older game. I think this is from 2012, so eight years old now. Oh, nothing like going back to a classic, though. It's been one of my favorites off and on, right on through. And we're going to be telling the story of Philip of Macedon today. Uh, it's been odd that we've been playing in uh, Crusader Kings in the world of uh, Macedon. Uh, well, in Bulgaria, but in one of the provinces of the former Macedonian Empire. And uh, Philip of Macedon, let's go back to what we were talking about here first. Philip of Macedon was the first guy to really put together the Greek world under one main um, uh, ruler. And his son, you may be more familiar with, Alexander the Great, went on to conquer the entire known world uh, at the time, and then died in Persia uh, very young, in his early 30s. All of this is to say Philip and Alexander were two of the people that the Caesars, the empire, uh, emperors of Rome later on, would go on and try to emulate. They were people that the Caesars looked up to. So I thought on this Ides of March, as we're doing a little bit of a historical look back, we'd uh, go back and take a look at Philip of Macedon. Or Macedon. Uh, there's no... The, the C in Greek doesn't make a S sound, it makes a K sound. Uh, so I, you'll hear me pronounce it both ways, because I learned it Macedon growing up, but I'm trying to be more uh, accurate with my Greek as time goes on. Anyway, let's start a new game, and we'll get into this uh, and uh, see where we go. This is a, um, what is it, a pausable real-time strategy game. It's going to start up with a tutorial, because it always does, uh, but it's, it's all good. So in uh, this scenario, scenario, it's really a campaign, we are going to play as Philip uh, II of Macedon, father of Alexander the Great. The scenario begins in 359 BCE, when Philip becomes regent after his brother, King Perdiccas, is killed defending the kingdom from an Illyrian invasion. Starting with just one city, you must regain control of the Macedonian cities, expel the Illyrian invaders, and expand your empire until all of Greece recognizes Philip as the first true hegemon. Uh, a hegemon is a ruler that wins power not only by conquering, but uh, by unified, agreed-upon um, nature. So they can be diplomatically elected hege hegemon as well. Uh, and if you've read any of the uh, Orson Scott Card series, you'd be familiar with that as well. Ooh, our opening cinematic. Kingdom of Macedon, 359 BCE. The Kingdom of Macedon was a weak tribal kingdom when the Illyrians invaded Upper Macedonia from the west. King Perdiccas III mobilized the entire Macedonian army and marched forth to stop them. The army fought bravely, but were no match for the battle-hardened hoplites of the Illyrian king, Bardalus. In the thick of battle, Perdiccas fell to an enemy spear and his army was slaughtered around him. With news of the defeat, the king's younger brother Philip returned from fighting in the east. The heir to the throne was Amantas IV, an infant. The Macedons gathered to elect another king in his stead. Philip's half-brother Archelaus made a claim to the throne, but Philip proposed an alternative to supplanting the heir. After a fierce debate, Philip compelled the assembly to elect him as regent to act on behalf of the infant king. Archelaus was put to death as a traitor. The Kingdom of Macedon had leadership once again. Hope had been renewed. But Philip would have to regain control of the Macedonian cities and drive the invading armies out of Macedonia if the kingdom was to survive. So that transition from map down to 
rather surface level, is something that can happen in the game. Uh, you can zoom out and zoom back in uh, to those levels. And it was one of the first games to be able to allow you to do that, too. Okay, pan the camera. Uh, all right, yep, WASD. Zoom and rotate. Um, okay, yep. Currently paused. Sure. Yeah, there we go. I'm pausing. Select the city of Agea by highlighting it and pressing it. There you go. Hover over Philip's portrait. There you go. Uh, move him outside the city. Active objectives are listed on the right. These are they. Um, all right, let's go to Philip. And then we're going to say we want to merge you with the companions. Okay, while this is going on, uh, Philip, his name, Philippos, it means horse lover, uh, one who loves horses. Uh, makes a lot of sense, like, as, not in that way, uh, <laughs> as one who is uh, bonded with horses, perhaps. Um, generals merge with combat units, sure, sure. And we're going to resupply the companions from the farm by moving them over there. Uh, Philip was one of the first people to put together a good cavalry, a heavy cavalry that was very effective. Um... And as a result, that was le what led to many of his military victories uh, in the first place. Uh, so, as we can see, we get a bonus charging with this companion cavalry. Uh, these men would all chain together throughout their entire life. They became very close friends. Companion, though, uh, means one who ate bread. Uh, rather than kill these people, we're going to capture them um, and put them to work in the mines. Uh, there are some topics in this that are a little bit less savory, but it is the ancient world... When you are fighting a rebellion, you can put people to work uh, that survive, rather than killing them outright, which are kind of your options there. Um, yes, I understand all of that. Okay, so uh, what do we need to do now? Um, capture a Mathia. Right, and I believe this is a Mathia here. What luck. Meanwhile, uh, y'all head over to somewhere. I don't know. Actually, just stay there. Okay, so Matthew has been captured. Uh, you can see our map here. I, I mentioned being able to see this way. So uh, Agea is the the city for which the Aegean is named. Um, so I'll just call it Aegea, the city of uh, the Earth, I believe. Uh, Amathia here is the first city we just took. You saw us um, go in there and take it. We've got Pella up here, which is the, uh, the capital of the Kingdom of Macedon, and Edessa, which is our next place. We do have a fog of war, but this is... Um, well, the Aegean and the surrounding region, uh, uh, the Greek Peloponnesian Peninsula here, and then over into Anatolia, uh, this being the channel into the Black Sea. Constantinople later will be founded here. Um, but I love that we get to see this kind of ancient Greece uh, in, in its heyday in this game. Okay, so we're gonna connect the cities up here. These are supply lines. They let us, well, transfer supplies, as you would expect. Um, and now we have new goals over here. So connect the farm. Yep, we're doing that. Um, and then liberate Edessa. Okay. We will head over and do that immediately. And you all just kind of head into the city. I don't really have a use for you yet. Um... The slaves will free themselves, given enough time, uh, without uh, supervision by one of your military units. Okay, and this this unit that we're fighting, these are um, Pelteists, I believe, which are spear throwers. Uh, you may be familiar with the Pila uh, of the Roman infantry. Well, these Pelteists were the ancient version of it, right? Uh, it just says defeated unit, it doesn't say what they were. So, yes, these um, these units would throw spears at each other. And fairly effective for medium-ranged combat. Um, okay, we've got Edessa. They completed city walls. Excellent. We need to connect Edessa into our trade network here. Supply network. However you want to call it. And now we've got to go get Pella. Former capital. I'm kind of flying through this beginning part... I've done this so many times, it's it's fairly familiar, but I forget the order of things. Um, I'm going to capture this farm along the way, say, hey, uh, don't you want to be Macedonian? And the farmers say, okay, we will feed you. And that's the way this works. So we'll continue on our way over to Pella, 
former capital of Macedon, and we're going to take it back and make it our capital again. Uh, you might notice there's some fields that are on fire here. Uh, that's because the city is under siege, and they're burning the fields as a way to try to make the city capitulate faster. You can see it's actually out of food. It's not just a fancy uh, graphic. Okay, uh, and then yes, capture them, please. Thank you. Come on. Good. And then you run over there. Try to get the charge bonus whenever we can. It does really... Uh, for some reason, people are pretty intimidated when um, being run after by a group of people on horseback. And then you capture. Y'all come on over here and put out this fire. Uh, all the commands in this game are given using... Um, a mouse button. If you use the uh, the right mouse button, you get that wheel that pops up. You can also get the kind of heading and direction um, design that you can get here. So we're going to go over there and put out that fire. We are going to take Pella, don't worry. Um, oh, no, no, no. You all. I had the wrong one selected. <laughs> go figure. Yes, go put out the fires. It's very important. I want to not have all the grain burned, please. For some reason, people like to eat. It's a habit that I think many people are in. Yep. You all can be merged together. Oh, I need to take the city yet. Of course. And y'all are going to be merged together into one group. I'm going to call you uh, workers here. Euphemistically, I suppose. Together. Good. I don't think you can capture things. No, you can't. You can light, uh, light them on fire, though. Interesting. Now, we haven't yet flanked an enemy because we haven't had more than just the one here. Okay, level up. Fine. Um, probably you all. I'm trying to figure out how to do that level up again. And in cavalry. Here we go. These are the skills, four different stats, uh, initiative, logistics, heroics, and engineering. Um, most of them do what they say. They Initiative makes you move faster. Logistics means you can carry more food with you, because if you go without food, your army doesn't fight well. As previously mentioned, people like to eat. Heroics, uh, that's kind of your morale. The more morale you have, the better you are in battle. And engineering is a weird thing for a military unit, you might think, but it's actually really useful because this helps you to... Uh, uh, tear down walls or build walls back up. Anyway, this uh, companion cavalry group, they need to move fast and they need to be heroic, so we're going to give them a little bit more initiative. You'll find them moving all over the place. Okay, you are connected and you need to have your trade route go there for your supply line. I'm going to call them trade routes uh, until the end of time and my apologies on that. They are supply lines, however. And you can see on the, the map view, you can see where those supply lines are actually established. Um, this is telling us we've done our first um, first objective here. Right, we need to build walls around Pella to protect it. I'm going to put these workers to work. Y'all come on over here and join them. Thank you. Um, not exactly what I'd intended to do. We need to refill the food lines there too. Just to have you over here so we don't have uh, escaping workers. As you can see, supply the capital is being worked on. There are food carts that are moving through. You can cut supply lines by destroying these carts. Um, it's quite an interesting simulation uh, as you go through it here. We have visible enemy units. Oh yeah? Uh, up there and over here. Okay. Cool. So, um, we need to recruit a full unit of uh, phalangites. Uh, phalanges, you may be aware, are the fingers of the hand. So the phalangites are those that carry the long spears, and those spears end up being their, um, what they called fingers, because they stand way tall up. Uh, as opposed to the, the hoplites that have long spears, the phalangites were, like, 
length and again. They were super long, which in ancient warfare was very effective at keeping the enemy away. Uh, when you work together in a group of spearmen, it's quite an effective defense. Okay, uh, but let's get a set of these going here. We want Langite br Brigades. Uh, the highly disciplined Macedonian infantry that fight in a dense phalanx formation. They are the best battle line troops available. Okay, cool. Let's go get some of them. We're also going to get a unit of spearmen down here. Uh, do, do, where are you? Spearmen. Um, these are much less specialized, but the spearmen will hold the walls for us, which is something we need very much. They'll run the, the ballistae and what have you. Okay, uh, let's go up here and take this little city that I happen to know that's up here. There's also a uh, mine over here that will be important for us. This is Elmobia. Okay. No more attacking us, Illyrians. Go away. That little flashing red face means that their morale is running out. And Oh, wow was a fast capture. Okay. Uh, then we're going to capture the city. Um, where are you? There you are. Head on down here and join this this band. The bands can get up to size 40, so I'd, I'd just like to merge everybody together where I can. Uh, even knowing that there is a... Uh, uh, right, we're going to send the phalangites out here to just kind of keep watch. Your units will recruit as long as they're in these circles. So by just sending out the, the group here, they're still recruiting. You can see the men just kind of pop up over time. They're being pulled from the pool of men that the city has here. Um, city's current population, and here are the recruits. They've got 20, 19, 18. So those recruits drop over time. Uh, Paeonians discovered. Interesting. Where did we discover the Paeonians? Not really seeing them yet. Okay. So, garrisoning units to defend Aegea. That's what I was doing down there. Um, Aegea is also supplying the companions, so I'm trying not to overtax them with too many units. However, Pella, you should be getting going with a Phalangite Brigade. You can see here uh, the Phalangites require 60 men. Pella supplies 80, so that's well within their ability to do. Um, and we're going to get a Phalangite Brigade going. And we've got a couple people here. Um, Parmenian, this is a general, 4444 skills. That's a very good skill set. And uh, Antipater, um, Master of Logistics. So somewhere that needs to run around without food a lot. We're going to actually assign you to the Phalangite Brigade of Edessa, and we're going to assign Antipater to Ella, once you have somebody there. Yep, there we go. Good. Um, excellent, in fact. Uh, let's see. You captured this. Excellent. We'll continue to make these supply lines go together. Um, pick up this healing shrine. So these are real-world locations uh, that have been brought into the game. Uh, out of recruits. Who's out of recruits? Uh, it doesn't say, but I'm guessing Edessa, because you didn't quite have the 60 you needed. That's fine. You'll be able to recruit more over time. In the meanwhile, we're going to change your home city um, to be Aegea. And the reason for that is you'll still recruit up to your max, which is what we need. And as long as you are in one of these gold circles, and the gold circles are connected there, this region around the cities, and the supply line is connected, they will continue to recruit. We're just going to pop you over here. You can defend Aegea while we capture this healing shrine. That's what I was talking about a moment ago. There's a gold mine here uh, at Mount Barner Barnus. Barnus. Oof, I need to remember how that works. Uh, Parmenian, why why did you stop? Uh, Antipater is there. Okay. Well, I guess you'll come out, and then you'll join in with them once they're out here. And you all are going to head down here to Aegea as well. Food and shrines are done. Cool. 
Um, healing shrines are very helpful, but they do take a little bit of resources to keep going. Long term, it's not, not that bad. Um, 